Uh, let's go to Jim Foss, the head coach of the New York Football Giants. And Jim, uh, welcome and a good evening to you. And I, I guess uh, offensive side of the ball is it, it, you got to add a little bit of juice. You got a new quarterback, Kerry Collins, in the offseason. You've gone tackling, you've gone running back. Is this, will we continue to see this during the draft and the coming rounds more offense than defense, Jim, do you think? I think Chris will probably, uh, I mean, I think there's some defensive players coming up that we'd, we're going to look at. Uh, you know, a need going in was an offensive lineman, and then uh, Joe Montgomery was available there. We were looking at a running back, and uh, we kind of like what he could become. And uh, so we think we're very happy with the first two picks. Jim, hi, it's Joe. Um, why hi, Joe. Joe Montgomery? Why Joe Montgomery? Basically, is, uh, you know, he's played at a very high level. He's averaged 6.5 yards a carry. He's a 223-pound running back that, uh, you know, has come off a very serious knee injury, but he came back this last year to play very well and didn't have any problems with that. And, and he's a bigger running back that hits the hole hard. He runs behind his pads very well. Uh, a, really a competitive young man, and, and we just liked him from all those aspects. From an offensive standpoint, do you feel like that this offense is going to have to be able to become a more explosive offense for the Giants to be able to to sustain a playoff type of year in and year out play? No question, Joe, we're going to have to. And that's the uh, acquisitions that Chris was talking about a little while ago. Uh, you know, we, we got a quarterback. Uh, Kent Graham is coming along. Uh, Pete Mitchell at the tight end gives us a real threat as a receiver. Young uh, receivers are developing. Uh, and we need to become more explosive on offense. We need to be able to get the ball down the field, make uh, plays in big chunks, and, uh, and obviously put the more points on the board and still keep the turnover ratio low like we have been. Uh, Jim, Chris, again, uh, Kerry Collins start the year one. Is it Graham or uh, open competition at training camp? And how do you see that progressing? No, uh, Kent's a starting quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, Kerry knew that when we signed him. Um, and, you know, Kent won uh, our last games. I mean, he played really well for us at that point in time. And, and he deserves that opportunity. And he's proven that he can do that. And I think the team has a lot of confidence in him. However, Kerry Collins, I think, uh, for us is a guy that that I really like and uh, gives us a guy that bring in here with no pressure on him to perform he can come in here and just redesign what he's doing and, and work with him on fundamentals and, and let him grow a little bit without the pressure to come in and play right away talking about pressure of not having to come in and right away um, John Fossil is a wide receiver at Weber State uh, Jim you're sitting there your son has an opportunity to maybe go on and play at the next level have you had an opportunity to talk to him about what his aspirations might be? Well, I have, Joe, and, and it's interesting. This is a, a different time. I mean, obviously, uh, I, I just do not have him here. I don't want him here. He's got a better chance somewhere else, and, and I think it would be a little uncomfortable situation for him and myself here. Uh, he's gotten a lot of calls lately from teams, uh, checking on different things and talking to him, and, and uh, I think he'll get a shot. Uh, I know he wants to, and, and he's worked very hard, and I, and I wish him the best. If not... He'll end up on the other side coaching. Oh, no, you're going to drag him in next to you, huh? <laughs> uh, no, he, he's got to get a little experience. I coached for a lot of years before I got to this level. Let me ask you one last question. Let me ask you one last question. Jesse Armstrong and Strahan, what are, their, what are their conditions? How are they doing? They're doing very well. Uh, uh, Jesse hasn't been in in the offseason, and uh, everybody's made uh, a lot of questions about that. He's fine. I've talked with him. Everything's fine right there. Michael Strahan is uh, healthy, working out very hard, and... Uh, you know, he's a leader on this football team. Jim, thanks an awful lot. It's been good talking to you. Good luck the rest of the weekend. Thank you very much. Jim Fossil, well, I mean, on paper, major gamble, Kerry Collins, but they're, but they're building up an offense at Nate. They're, a year ago, they won the division. They have an easier schedule this coming year, and uh, they, they hope to get right back in the thick of things, looking up now at not only Dallas, but the Arizona Cardinals, wild card team from that division. Uh, the Buffalo Bills have just made a very interesting pick in the second round. Peerless Price, who some thought would go least top two, if not bottom one, wide receiver from Tennessee, as they look to go three wide with Doug Flutie and eventually replace 
Uh, one of the most prolific receivers of all time, Andre Reid. Well, I'll tell you, Chris, I call him a quick six wide receiver. Gets you the touchdown, makes the big play. Not that big. That's why some teams may have passed to him late first, early second round. But when you get into the late second, you get real value. A productive player in the SEC. Came back from the injury, put up big numbers this year, and made huge catches in key games. They're the one-handed catch on a deep throw against Mississippi State. SEC championship game. Tennessee trailed at that point. He made the big play with six minutes left. Carried them to the victory. Then in the national championship game against junior cornerback Mario Edwards. Beats him on the deep throw again. Big completion, touchdown, led to Tennessee's victory in the national championship. Came through in the clutch for Tennessee time and time again this year. See, I think, I think this is just an excellent choice for Buffalo because, again, we always talk about quarterbacks not having to go into situations where there's a lot of pressure on them. They're going to have to perform right away. Here's a young man that comes in, gets a chance to learn from Andre Reid. This is a guy that's played inside. He's played outside. He's one of the toughest receivers you'll find in football and one of the most efficient. You take a look at the receptions on their depth chart. Eric Moulds had a good year last year. Andre Reid, an incredible 63 catches just coming back from injury Kevin Williams well Kevin and can, can be, be now more the return man he can be why they so brought him at, in yes. exactly so now all of a sudden you've got that depth at wide receiver you've got a young man who can progress get better and possibly come and be your third guy well cornerback and wide receiver were the first two uh, uh, positions the Bills wanted to fill now college stats don't necessarily translate in the pros and we did this with Boston from Ohio State but I mean these are some pretty good guys here Willie Galt Alvin Harper and Carl Slim Pickens and as far as college stats are concerned, although Price maybe had a, a little extra playing time, a little extra year in there, and he had Peyton Manning up until this year, and then they were undefeated, his numbers are better than all of them. Mel, can he be a frontline receiver? Many of those Tennessee receivers, but well, we saw the best ones. There's some others that were much better in college than they were in the pros. How do you project him as, as a pure pro player? I think as a deep receiver, he's outstanding. What he has to prove, Chris, is he can go inside, be that intermediate threat as well, and a combination receiver, a complete receiver. But I think you look at Peerless Price, the ability after the catch, very impressive. He's a confident young man, and certainly at Tennessee with Peyton Manning, and then this year with T. Martin, put up huge numbers. And when they needed a big catch, they went to, to Peerless Price, and he came through. That Mississippi State game and the Florida State game for the national championship say it all. The Buffalo Bills trying to load up to uh, get back on top in that very tough uh, AFC East won by the Jets last year. By the way, the second game of the year, an RESPN opener at the refurbished Ralph Wilson Stadium. Week two, Jets at Buffalo in a Sunday night game that's, that's uh, one of, part of a, a really good schedule that we have this year, Joe. We thank the league for that. It'd be a good time to say that publicly. Let's go up to Mike and Mort, guys. Well, Boomer, uh, you know, some people are wondering why Peerless Price fell this far. And what I was told by some teams is that he showed some attitude in a workout in early March in which he actually refused to run routes at the workout at the University of Tennessee. Now, that doesn't scare the Buffalo Bills. If you'll remember, Eric Modes from Mississippi State, same conference, SEC, was a guy who uh, also had a little attitude problem, and Buffalo obviously hit the mark on him. And from a college standpoint, Chris, very interesting. Team that won the national championship, it took until pick 52 to get their second selection. We only had Al Wilson at the bottom of the first round earlier. So even though Tennessee won the brass ring in college football, they did not have the best draft production. Kansas City's on the clock. We are late stages round two. And the draft continues from across America after this. have what it takes to eliminate their foes when all is said and done will they save the day be there next time to find out arizona rattlers live action heroes listen carefully to the sound of my voice you are getting sleepy very sleepy Sports news is more important than anything else in the world. It's more important than real news. It's more important than eating. You will watch every edition of Fox Sports News. And uh, don't tell anybody about my plans for world domination. Thank you. World Wide Web, it really is worldwide. This is something that this guy had. Uh, he sent it along to me. Um, this is a Pakistani uh, birdie. Um, it was from the Pakistani badminton team. And so I got that. I gave him a Drew Bledsoe uh, football. 
they have no idea who Drew Bledsoe is, but um, they wanted to make the trade. And I was just like, fine, I'll take that. If you want just a Drew Bledsoe football, I got those like a dime a dozen. Welcome back to New York as we are uh, getting uh, toward the end of the second round. Kansas City, Dallas, Jacksonville, the next three. And let's start. We are once again tied to the whip around. Sal Palantonio in Cleveland. An historic day here in Cleveland with the first pick of the draft. The